morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, August 3rd, 2018. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Jonah Booker. Jonah, thank you for uh, staying up late. We are recording this uh, early in the morning if you're on the East Coast, uh, very, very late on the West Coast where Jonah is. Um, and just wanted to get your reaction to all this that's been going on. I have not talked to you since any of this has broken. Um, I'll just cut to the chase, Jay Book. Do you think Urban Meyer will keep his job? I have to tell you, yesterday when everything broke and uh, McMurphy, uh, who originally, uh, you know, jumped on the story, he whipped everyone up in a frenzy and said that he knew that Urban had lied. And then once you saw the news that he was being suspended uh, with pay, I thought to myself, he's done. This is over with. There's no way he's coming back from this. And then Aston, then the next day, as, as things kind of started to trickle out and you starting to hear, you know, different rumors, things of that nature, I'm leaning towards the idea that Ohio State is trying to do everything in their power to figure out how they can make this work and keep him and potentially give him a, suspen- a suspension. So I'm I'm leaning towards right now he's keeping him keeping his job, uh, but he's going to pay a heavy price with that. I mean, you fire him right now and he, you're paying him thirty eight million dollars. I'm pretty sure Ohio State is not wanting to pay a football coach thirty eight million dollars who is not coaching this football program. Yeah, and a lot of people will say. And you might be right. I mean, I actually hope you're right because that would mean Ohio State keeps Urban Meyer. Um, if he's suspended, okay. I mean, let's think of this long term. Uh, they'll be okay for three or four games. Uh, if Urban Meyer leaves, I mean, what's the program going to look like, you know, two, three years from now? So I think every Buckeye fan would, would take that in a heartbeat. My question for you is if Ohio State comes out and is like, okay, we're suspending you for three or four games and whatever reason they give, like, Aren't people going to be like, well, wait a minute, why didn't you fire him? Or if it's like some BS suspension, like why would, people might be like, why did you, why did you do anything at all? Like it, I, I can just see people saying if you're suspending him, you're admitting he did something wrong. Right, and so if Ohio State is, is damn if you do, damn if you don't right now because you're, you're always going to have the national media who is out for blood. They don't care. They just want to see somebody get their head pretty much cut off. They don't care who it is, and if it's Ohio State, it's it's going to generate huge clicks. It's all plastered over the news. So regardless of what Ohio State decides, their opinions are essentially made up. You're going to have the faithful and the fan base who is backing Urban Meyer. I, I, put, a, I put up on my Twitter poll yesterday early and it's about 3,000 votes right now straight up you know what do you think Urban Meyer should be fired and right now 87 percent of about 3,000 people are saying no so that kind of gives you an idea uh perspective and obviously I'm being followed by you know a bunch of Ohio Hmm. State Fans and, and I was going to say no, no, no bias, no bias there at all from anybody who's following you. There's no Buckeye fans following you or anything. No, but that it still is, is relevant though. I mean, you know, we can joke about it, but um, even I, I've heard a lot of neutral fans. Even uh, if you if you hate Ohio State and you hate Urban Meyer, you you, you, you want him out. I, I've never seen Adam Schefter so giddy as, as to talk about the Urban Meyer situation as a topic for a different day. But I've, I've heard a, a lot of neutral college football fans say, like, wait a minute, unless there's something else that is not being reported, like, how is this a fireable offense? I'm hearing that from neutral parties. Yeah, and I totally agree. I don't think he should be fired over this. Now, you can make an argument that um, Urban should have had better oversight over his program. You can make an argument that um, he should have fired Zach Smith years ago or even after knowing of the 09 allegations, he should have never even brought Zach Smith onto his staff. But we don't know the entire story right now. I know Bruce Feldman was on Carpenter Rothman yesterday, and he says something is not adding up. In 09, you mean to tell me that Urban 
caught wind of the situation and took it to Jeremy Foley at Florida. But in 2015, he doesn't take it to Gene Smith. He's just all of a sudden going to cover for a wide receiver coach who was probably underqualified for the job to begin with. And he's going to put his entire program at risk and his career at risk to cover for Zach Smith. And Bruce, and he made a good point. Like, if he took it to his higher authority in 09, why wouldn't he have done it in 2015? That's the question that is out there. It's already Friday here uh, in the Eastern Time Zone. Like I said, it's almost uh, Friday where you're at in, in the Phoenix, Arizona area. I have to think, Jay Book, that we're going to hear at least something um, later today from Ohio State. I don't know if it will be a, a conclusion to this ordeal um, or just some type of statement, but um, what do you think is next? I mean, I think we're both in agreement. I've, I haven't said this on the show yet because I've been going back and forth on this. Yesterday on the show I said I thought he was going to lose his job. Now I, I think from everything I've gathered, I do think that uh, I agree with you. I think he'll be suspended and not fired. Um, I, I really do. Um, but what do you expect later today? Do you expect nothing on Friday? Uh, what do you expect to hear next? I don't think we're going to hear anything, and the reason being is the school announced, they announced last night that they have opened an independent investigation into this situation. So that tells right. me what, what Ohio State is doing is they're going through, and if they decide to keep Urban Meyer, they know it's going to be, you know, people regardless have their minds made up. It's going to be a tremendous backlash from the Me Too movement as well as uh, media who's out for blood and, you know, the the rivals who are out there want to see Ohio State fall. So there's going to be a huge win. So once that happens or if that happens, they have to make sure all of their ducks are lined up. They have to be able to go and say, we are suspending him or we're keeping him as our coach. We opened up uh, an independent inquiry into the matter. We did a thorough investigation to figure out what is going on, and these are the conclusions and the results that we came back with. And, and to me, if they if they were going to fire Urban, I think they would have just went ahead and already moved forward with it. Or if they were going to do a, a buyout, they'd have went ahead and, and been moving forward with it. If Why would you open up it in the uh, independent inquiry? And the other thing that our own uh, Steve Hellwagon made a great point um, that I thought was very interesting yesterday on the Carpenter Rocking Show is the school essentially allowed Urban to put his own name on the statement that was released to the public. And they also put him on paid administrative leave. When you look at what happened at Louisville with Rick Pitino and their AD, that was unpaid administrative leave. And the the letter came, it didn't come from Michael Drake or Gene Smith. Something with this type of magnitude, would, you would think that the president would have his name on it or at minimum the Ohio State Athletic Department having their name on it. But essentially it came out as like a, co- a collaboration with Urban having his input on the message that was being sent out to the public. Great insights from Jonah Booker. Thank you very much, Jay Book, and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning in to the show. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great day and a great weekend. Let's hear the Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. <laughs> Oh, my God.